Hey team, hello, my name is Jose. I'm a blockchain developer who works on this technology on a daily basis. And today I'm gonna do a class on basics of blockchain. Um, I'm gonna start with a short video on what is a blockchain. As you can see, simply ex explain, it's about a six minute video. Um, I like this video because it kind of goes straight to the point. Uh, it explains a lot of basic concepts that I want to make sure that get covered. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't forget to cover them. And the video does, I think, a lot better at explaining these basic concepts than I can. Uh, so without any further ado, like I said, I'm a blockchain developer and I work on this technology on a daily basis. And this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. I'm going to be teaching you uh, start with blockchain basics and kind of build it from then, from that point forward. All right, so here we go. Oh, pay attention to the video. Uh, feel free to take some notes because we're going to be building on this stuff. So a lot of the stuff that the video is going to be talking about, some of the key points, uh, some of the key terms, some of the technical terms. Make sure that you remember, write them down because I will be using them from now on. I'm going to be using technical terms. I'm not going to be using um, any kind of nicknames or, or substitute terms. I'm going to be using technical terms. I am a blockchain developer. I use technical terms. I don't substitute. I don't use I don't use nicknames for terms. I I don't use the street words or the slangs for the terms. I'm going to use technical words. So you're going to need to know them. Blockchains are incredibly popular nowadays. But what is a blockchain? How do they work? What problems do they solve? And how can they be used? Like the name indicates, a blockchain is a chain of blocks that contains information. This technique was originally described in 1991 by a group of researchers and was originally intended to timestamp digital documents so that it's not possible to backdate them or to tamper with them, almost like a notary. However, it went by mostly unused until it was adopted by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009 to create the digital cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Now, a blockchain is a distributed ledger that is completely open to anyone. They have an interesting property. Once some data has been recorded inside the blockchain, it becomes very difficult to change it. So how does that work? Well, let's take a closer look at a block. Each block contains some data, the hash of the block, and the hash of the previous block. The data that is stored inside the block depends on the type of blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain, for example, stores the details about a transaction in here, such as the sender, receiver, and the amount of coins. A block also has a hash. You can compare a hash to a fingerprint. It identifies a block and all of its contents, and it's always unique, just as a fingerprint. Once a block is created, its hash is being calculated. Changing something inside the block will cause the hash to change. So in other words, hashes are very useful when you want to detect changes to blocks. If the fingerprint of a block changes, it no longer is the same block. The third element inside each block is the hash of the previous block. And this effectively creates a chain of blocks, and it's this technique that makes a blockchain so secure. Let's take an example. Here we have a chain of three blocks. As you can see, each block has a hash and the hash of the previous block. So block number 3 points to block number 2, and number 2 points to number 1. Now the first block is a bit special. It cannot point to previous blocks because, well, it's the first one. We call this block the Genesis block. Now let's say that you tamper with the second block. This causes the hash of the block to change as well. In turn, that will make block 3 and all following blocks invalid because they no longer store a valid hash of the previous block. So changing a single block will make all following blocks invalid. But using hashes is not enough to prevent tampering. Computers these days are very fast and can calculate hundreds of thousands of hashes per second. You can effectively tamper with a block and recalculate all the hashes of other blocks to make your blockchain valid again. So to mitigate this, blockchains have something that is called proof of work. It's a mechanism that slows down the creation of new blocks. In Bitcoin's case, 
It takes about 10 minutes to calculate the required proof of work and add a new block to the chain. This mechanism makes it very hard to tamper with the blocks because if you tamper with one block, you need to recalculate the proof of work for all the following blocks. So the security of a blockchain comes from its creative use of hashing and the proof of work mechanism. But there is one more way that blockchains secure themselves and that is by being distributed. Instead of using a central entity to manage the chain, blockchains use a peer-to-peer -peer network and everyone is allowed to join. When someone joins this network, he gets a full copy of the blockchain. The node can use this to verify that everything is still in order. Now, let's see what happens when someone creates a new block. The block is sent to everyone on the network. Each node then verifies the block to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with. And if everything checks out, each node adds this block to their own blockchain. All the nodes in this network create consensus. They agree about what blocks are valid and which aren't. Blocks that are tampered with will be rejected by other nodes in the network. So to successfully tamper with a blockchain, you need to tamper with all the blocks in the chain, redo the proof of work for each block, and take control of more than 50% of the peer-to-peer -peer network. Only then will your tampered block become accepted by everyone else, so this is almost impossible to do. Blockchains are also constantly evolving. One of the most recent developments is the creation of smart contracts. These contracts are simple programs that are stored on the blockchain and can be used to automatically exchange coins based on certain conditions. More on smart contracts in a later video. The creation of blockchain technology piqued a lot of people's interest. Soon others realized that this technology can be used for other things, like storing medical records, creating a digital notary, or even collecting taxes. So now you know what a blockchain is, how it works on a basic level, and what problems it solves. Want to learn how you can implement a simple blockchain in JavaScript? Then check out this video here. And as always, thank you very much for watching. All right, so let's break down what a blockchain is and what it is not. <clears throat> so it is encrypted, right? Um, it's pretty tough to crack. Uh, the encryption is pretty tough to crack, right? So just on the encryption alone, it'll take someone thousands of years to encrypt. If they could even um, uh, decrypt it, not encrypt, decrypt it, right? So let's not talk about that. Uh, so it's very hard to, to break the encryption. It is permissionless, right? Because it is decentralized, meaning not one person is in charge. So let's look at what that looks like. Uh, permissionless. So centralized, right? Centralized means, and, and so I'm retired from the military and I look at it from a security standpoint, right? One person is in charge, right? One person in charge in the middle, everybody else, Right? They don't know each other, they don't talk to each other because they have to talk to the person in the middle. Right? Alright, so this is a typical centralized operations. Alright, so this one resembles to me more like a terrorist type of operations where you have a um where you have a decentralized um you have a decentralized control of groups with centralized um, control of the operation and control also of the information uh, so these are kind of cells right where there's a leader and the leader talks to the individuals right and then that particular leader talks to a leader and these groups they don't talk to each other so the groups are isolated from each other and then the individuals are isolated from it, from all the other individuals and then the leaders are isolated from also the leaders and they only talk to the main leader, right? And then this is distributed. This is completely decentralized and distributed op um, operations. So any one individual can talk to any other node, right? The nodes are freely distributed and they can talk to each other. So in essence, if you can look at this, 
this would be it, it wouldn't really truly look like this this would look more like a ball this would be more like a circle and these nodes will connect to each other right there will be no on linkage of nodes right theoretically speaking they should be able to talk to to each other uh, completely distributed right in my mind that's how I see it um, <clears throat> so the advantage to that is that um, in this particular system more than 50% right so 50.1 or whatever that threshold is 51% whatever more than 50% have to agree that the one transaction is valid in order to be approved right so more than 50% have to agree on the transaction to be valid uh, so think about that right for for that brand, for that one block to be accepted right they all have to agree for well not all but more than 50% all right, so if someone wanted to cheat the system, right? If I have a bank account, Jose, and I have $20 on that bank account and I'm here, right? And I wanted to, um, let me see. How big is this thing going to draw? And I'm here, right? And I have $20. <clears throat> but I wanted to have $1,000, right? I wanted to have $1,000. Let's say that there's 1,000 banks. There's 1,000 banks and i'm in bank number one and i want to cheat and i want to go from twenty dollars to a thousand dollars well that means that i need to in my bank i need to change my ledger and i need to put a thousand dollars but also right in the other banks i need to also change the ledger i need to update all the other blocks right because i need to update the transaction was also written in all the other blocks so in every other block i also have to change from twenty dollars to a to a thousand dollars now, the problem with that is that at the same time that I'm trying to do that, there are new transactions that are coming in, right? So I need to be really fast. I need to be really fast and write the new transaction in my bank and also write it in the other banks, right? And then I need to get more than 50% of the banks to approve the transaction, right? And I need to do that before other transactions come in so I need to do it faster than the speed of light or or I need to slow down I need to slow down the blockchain to a little bit slower than the speed of light a little bit slower than the, than the speed of light so that I can be faster than the blockchain so I can beat it right but then I still got the problem that I need to be that I need to manage, right? I need to be in charge of more than 50% of the nodes. And I remember all these nodes are independently from each other. Somehow I need to take control of 50% of the nodes, convince them to approve my transaction faster than the speed of light so that I can beat the system, right? That's how secure this thing is. It's not impossible, right? Because, I mean, truly, Right? Nothing in this life, right? we're, we're humans, so nothing in this life is truly impossible, but it's highly unlikely. Alright, so that is distributed, that is security. So that takes care of something else in the blockchain. Right? So all this comes about a an issue that they were trying to resolve on the blockchain. Um, and let's see... Uh, where did I put it at? I don't think I have it up. Um, something I was looking for, the trilemma, right here. Something called the trilemma. So instead of a dilemma, it's three things, right? Decentralization, which we just talked about, we don't want not one person to be in charge because then they can do whatever they want. Security, right? We want the blockchain to be secure. We don't want people to be tampering. And then we have scalability. We want the blockchain to be able to be scalable. We want we want the technology itself to be able to be um, improved upon, right? Pretty easily. We don't want stuff that's hard to improve. We don't want software that's difficult to improve. <clears throat> So we want things that are scalable, right? That we can improve, you know, fairly easily. 
So that is the trilemma. So that's what these blockchains try to do. Now we have two major blockchains. Right? We have Bitcoin, which is the original right coin. Uh, and then we have Ethereum, uh, which came right after one of the coins that came right after Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, you know, the original coin, um, you got to look at these these blockchains as being their own kind of Internet. They are their own network and they, they are all different. Right. So Bitcoin, the program written for Bitcoin and the hardware that it uses is different from Ethereum. Right? Bitcoin is programmed using a specific program language and a specific hardware. Right. Ethereum uses a specific hardware and, and a specific software that they use for for ethereum right they're not the same they're not programmed the same they don't move at the same speed they don't they don't react the same um and for that matter also the people that participate in the blockchains are not the same right bitcoiners are different people from people that participate in the ethereum chain i, I just went to to a bitcoin conference um to be honest i you know i didn't know much about bitcoin even though you know i'm i'm into the blockchain and i'm developing in ethereum but i didn't much didn't know much about bitcoin because i don't participate and there's a reason for that um you know i just realized that people that participate in ethereum are at least for me my experience i'm, I'm only speaking for myself in my experience i found that the reason why i didn't know about bitcoin is because it's to me you know we're different people right Bitcoin attracts a different type of personality from my experience uh, those folks they they don't want another coin in their blockchain all they want is Bitcoin so when Bitcoin had an issue and other people wanted another coin and they had an issue they forked it right they created a separate coin but they kicked it off the blockchain and then it happened again and they kicked that other coin of the blockchain as well um so then bitcoin is by itself they don't want another coin they don't want to trade it they don't want to do too much with it other than payment and and some gaming stuff um but that's it they don't want another coin they don't want to trade it they just want to hold it and and that's it they don't want to do nothing with it um you know ethereum you know we, we're doing all kinds of stuff with it um it's, it's different people right different flavors and you know and i'm happy for them i want to see more representation from hispanics and minorities on, on the bitcoin side because it's good right it's good that that there are different flavors and different things being developed on that side um because who knows what we're going to see maybe some advancements in in healthcare that are not possible in ethereum that are possible with bitcoin right it could be good we never know possibilities are endless that's what i said earlier you know we don't live in a world where things are impossible Things can be very, very unlikely and they can be very, very tough, but they're not usually impossible. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Bitcoin, right? It's a different network, different flavor. Um, let me get back to my to my flow here. Um, you know, blockchains are usually permissionless, right? There are no rules, right? There's, you all know the governments are, are going crazy about these um, regulations and all these things. So we have to come up with our own rules. Right. So in order for people to be fair and not lose their money and for people to participate, we need a system of rules. Since governments are not getting involved so much, so we have to come up with our own systems. So Ethereum, right? Ethereum, on the other hand, it's, um, it's a different system. It's a different system where we allow other coins to participate, other uh, protocols to participate. Um, and the Ethereum protocol itself, it's a protocol um that allows something called smart contracts so when you have a smart contract now you have utility right so blockchains are valuable because they have use they have a purpose you saw that this whole mess of tokens and crypto started back in 99 right um and then 2009 when so-called satoshi nakamoto um released the 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 Bitcoin protocol that's when everybody was like whoa what is this thing right because it had utility it had a case it had a use case 
people were like, whoa, what is this? Now, this is, this is interesting, right? Now we can use this. Let's talk about it. So, there, here comes Ethereum with the smart contracts. Everybody's like, whoa, here's another one, right? What is this? Let's take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look at it. So, Ethereum um, versus Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a single token chain. Ethereum is a multi-layer um, and a multi-side chain solution. So let's talk about that. So Ethereum, you can have smart contracts, right? Ethereum is the name of the blockchain. Right? Ethereum is the name of the blockchain. Remember, the blockchain is the technology. The blockchain is the network. It's the internet, right? The blockchain is the internet, the network. The name of this blockchain is called Ethereum. The currency, the token in this blockchain is called Ether, right? The currency in this blockchain is called Ether. Ether. Ether is the cryptocurrency in the Ethereum network, right? ETH is the symbol of this currency. Right, it's just like any other tradable market, right? The network is called Ethereum. Ether is the cryptocurrency. The symbol is ETH. In the United States, the country is called the United States. The currency for the United States is called the dollar. The symbol for the dollar is the USD. Same thing, right? This country is called Ethereum. The currency for Ethereum is Ether. The symbol for Ether is ETH. Simple as that. All right. <clears throat> so then Ether in its origin is pretty slow. Very slow, very expensive to use. So then they came up with dApps, right? Which is decentralized applications, right? They came up with decentralized applications, dApps, right? So what are dApps? Right, dApps use Ethereum to disrupt business models, right? They come up with decentralized applications. Anybody can use them. They don't have censorship, meaning <clears throat> nobody, no, because remember, it's decentralized, right? Nobody can tell you, you can't say that. Nobody can tell you, you have to remove that comment. Nobody's going to put you on Facebook jail. Nobody's going to put you on YouTube jail. Nobody can because nobody controls it. Right? It's free. For, there's no owners. Nobody can do You can't do that. Uh, it's built around payments, right? You can make money. It's secure. It's anonymous. Right? You don't have to submit your ID. You don't have to prove who you are. Right? You don't have to do any of that decentralized applications in decentralized finance right you and i can play you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of money to play here you can play with ten dollars right ten dollars can make you a lot of money <clears throat> right this is not financial advice by the way right do your own research so to fix the issues of speed and, and expenses on Ethereum, they come up with a couple of solutions, right? Uh, here are this website, L2B, and whoever is going to put this, uh, please make sure that all these websites are on the comments. Uh, Bitcoin.org, Ethereum.org, uh, Ethereum.org, Ethereum.org, NFTs, uh, this is Gemini.com, Cryptopedia, Blockchain Trilemma, L2Beat, L2Beat.com. So here you can see um, some of the Ethereum solutions, right? Where there is a layer, a multi-layer solution or a side chain. So in Ethereum, right? Ethereum is the blockchain. There's only one token in Ethereum and it's called Ether. Now, because you can have smart contracts, now you can have other tokens on top of Ethereum but they're not the currency of Ethereum. There's only one currency, right? So these other tokens are measured against Ethereum, right? 
they're measured against Ethereum because they're on the Ethereum blockchain. So these are called side chains, right? You can have side chains. You can also have multi layers. So you can have a layer two, another layer on top of the Ethereum layer. Now, the advantage of this is speed. For example, Matic, the Matic token, right? So let's go to Polygon. Let's go to the Polygon Bridge. So the Polygon Bridge, right? See? Polygon is a side chain. So Polygon is a side chain. It is not a layer two solution. It's a side chain. It is a side chain because it is, has its own blockchain. It is called the Polygon blockchain. It is a proof of stake chain and it is a side chain on top of ethereum but it's a, it is a chain of its own and it has a bridge right this is the bridge what is a bridge a bridge connects something right what does it connect it connects ethereum to polygon that's what it does it connects ethereum to polygon why does it do that it does that in order to settle the transactions on ethereum polygon does not settle any transactions on polygon it doesn't do that Polygon settles all of its transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. That's why it's a side chain. All right, so hopefully that clears that up. It is not a multi-layer solution. Right? A multi-layer solution is something like Arbitrium, Optimism. Right? And then Arbitrium has a ton, 58% of market share. Jesus. So these are some of the other, these are use cases, right? This is why Ethereum is so popular, right? It has so many use cases, so many, look, look how much money is locked into these solutions. $2.83 billion, right, into these solutions, right? And then we haven't even talked about NFTs, right? Um, the other thing about the blockchain is that the blockchain is, I assume that is decentralized, it's immutable, right? Nobody can change it because you have to be faster in the speed of light. Uh, every it's public, everybody can fact check it, right? You can come here to Etherscan. Where's my Etherscan? And you can put an address, like I put this address in here, and you can search it and it'll give me all the transactions in this address, right? All the transactions of this address right here. It's public, it's public view, it's a, it's a database. I can query the database and I can get all the transactions. Then I can come here to the ERC20 tokens, which are the smart contract tokens, right? ERC20. And I can see all the smart contracts this, this particular somebody has been trading, right? It's pretty active. So ERC20, what is an ERC20? It's a type of, it's a type of contract, right? It's a type of standard, right? It's a smart contract. So an ERC20, Okay, so what is an ERC20 token? Uh, so let's go to ERC20 token standard, right? ERC20 token standard. Why do we have it? These are the smart contracts. Well, we got to have it because we need to be standard. We don't want people out there just coming up with whatever token they want to come up with because this is how we end up with rug pulls and people losing money, right? So we have a standard. The standard says that in order for it to be an ERC20 token, your contract has to meet certain specs when it comes to the coding quality, right? So this speaks about quality. In order for it to be a good token of good quality, it needs to meet certain coding standards, right? So if it meets the standards, then it's an ERC20. Now, who verifies the standards? Because remember, this is open source right there's no police this decentralized there's no government watch there's no agency that's watching this so the community right other developers are watching they're reading each other's contracts to make sure that somebody that nobody's cheating right that's how it works this is how it truly works other people are so how do you know that a token is good well you know that a token is good because other people are willing to pay three, four thousand dollars for it. That's how you know a token is good. 
Somebody's willing to pay fifty thousand dollars for a token. That token is good, for the most part, right? I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just telling you how the system of peer-to-peer -peer works. It's a trust-based system. This is the truth. Okay, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to participate. But this is the system that people are making money in. It's up to you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so it's a trust-based system, right? ERC-20 token standards are out there. People have to abide by them. Other people fact check, right? We fact checking each other. So this is very interesting because imagine this. I can see the nodes, right? I wanna, I wanna do this. I wanna, I wanna cheat the system, but I can't, right? So I'm not gonna do it. But if I want to use the information that's available to my advantage, because I want to see what the blockchain is doing, that's called on-chain analytics, right? On-chain analytics. On-chain analytics. Analytics, right? On-chain analytics. Um, so this is basically how it works. Right, I buy um, I buy a token and the token goes from there to here to here to here to here to here right that's the transaction So, but there's a gazillion transactions that are also coming here. And this is the Ethereum contract, right? This is the Ethereum contract. A thousand transactions are coming here. So this particular contract is lit up, right? This contract is just lit up. A ton, this is, let's say this is Shiba. Shiba is just lit up. So the on-chain analytics are telling me there's a lot of activity on Shiba. Well, I may want to know why, right? So if I can use the distributed on-chain analytics and I can look at the node activity and I can look at contract activity, then I might be able to figure out why this particular user is buying so much dog on Shiba or so much whatever. It's buying all these dogs, right? It's got to be something with it. There's a lot of activity on all these and it, um, ERC-20 tokens that have to do with dogs, right? A lot of stuff going on but this is telling me something activity is high the own chain analytics right now imagine this because it's supposed to be an I don't know who this person is I don't know who this person is but guess what I'm gonna tell you something else and I'm, I'm gonna talk about this in a later class I know that this is um, beginners but we want to keep talking about analytics because I want you I don't want you to I don't want you to walk away from crypto just because you don't understand crypto right now but I want you to think about the possibilities imagine this I don't know you maybe you don't even have a social media account maybe you're not even on Facebook maybe you're not even on whatever I'm not on TikTok doesn't matter right I don't know your name I don't know your wallet address and this is anonymous, right? And I'm not trying to scare you. But I'm trying to tell you what can be done with on-chain analytics, right? And I call this, I call it the dark matter effect. I can't see dark matter. Nobody can. Matter of fact, we call it dark matter because we don't know what the hell it is. We can't see it and space is dark. So we call it dark matter, right? <laughs> I mean, go figure, right? I call it the dark matter effect. I may not know who you are. I may not know where the money is, is what I mean to say. I don't know why this person is buying these things, what the price point entry are, or why they are what they are. But if I do enough on-chain analytics, I can see the dark matter. I can see 
what I cannot see now. I have enough data points to connect the dots, right? I have enough data points to connect the dots, literally. I can connect the dots and I can see the matter that is missing, the data that is missing in between the dots will begin to surface. All of the stuff that I cannot see in between the data, all of this missing information will begin to surface if I start looking at the on-chain data transaction. I will begin to see why this person is buying all of this stuff and maybe I can make some money with this person too. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this won't scare you because I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to let you know how we can make money. Okay. It's called on-chain analytics. <clears throat> I love it. Um, this is why I look at this stuff too. Okay. These are the node distributions, right? We talked about nodes, right? Nodes are distributed, right? The data is distributed on the blockchain. Where in Ethereum, right, they tell you, they can show you maps of the nodes. Well, not like somebody's address, uh, but they can show you like a heat map, right? Where the concentration of nodes is located in the world. And you can see that the US is very dominant. They give you the the map. The United States is very dominant. Here's another one, right? This is more raw data. <clears throat> right? Gives you again, tells you the United States, the East Coast is well, you know, Georgia just made a big deal with the Bitcoiners and a lot of the Ethereum miners also came. Texas is another state that's just on fire. <clears throat> this is another map. I don't think this is accurate. I think this might be a little outdated. <coughs> okay, this is more like activity, actual, supposed to be, I guess, current actual activity. These are Bitcoin nodes. Yeah, these are Bitcoin. Yeah, I find this one pretty neat. Yeah, global Bitcoin nodes. So this is the DeFi pulse. Uh, this tells you the value locked in in, uh, in Ethereum. Value that is locked one hundred and five point six nine billion dollars locked in Ethereum. It's pretty heavy. Uh, and I remember when this was down to like just ten billion dollars. <throat> Not even a year ago. <coughs> um, Let's go to a year. Yeah, see? Right here, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember this. See? I can't make this stuff up. I remember this. Just like I remember when email came out. I clearly remember. I remember the day I was in Germany. I was in Germany in the army. I remember the day. Yeah. I remember the day when the Berlin Wall came down. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little old, but I'm not that old. <clears throat> uh, so it's a lot of money locked in here, right? A lot of money locked. Um, level two beat then tells you how much percentage of that money these guys are, are bitrium. You gotta start looking at this stuff. You want to know where the money is going. This this particular exchange is is the favorite exchange for people that do um, um, the 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 flash loans. I might do a flash loan class too. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start doing um, um, coding classes, JavaScript, uh, NFT, coding your own NFT uh, class. JavaScript is, is kind of like the building blocks. Uh, might get into some Solidity later, coding uh, on Ethereum, Solidity and uh, JavaScript and all that good stuff. JavaScript is kind of like the building blocks, so I think that's where I'll start with some JavaScript courses. Do about an uh, eight-week course. <clears throat> meeting twice a week uh, do some homework some projects you know we'll build some cool stuff um, <clears throat> maybe do even um, uh, some JavaScript and uh, web 3 some um, some ethereum projects on JavaScript that could be probably some pretty cool stuff 
Uh, Y'all, let me let me know what you think. Uh, let me make sure that I'm covering everything I wanted to cover. Um, okay, so as you can see, there's way other, many, many, many other projects that are coming on the Ethereum um, chain. I mean, there's there's so much other stuff. Um, you also have games. Um, again, you have Immutable X. Right, which is a game first layer two NFTs on Ethereum um, then some other uh, non Ethereum projects are Ami right. Ami Sego is it Ami Sego <clears throat> OMG no Ami Token uh, Ikami yeah the economy project is hot, man. Disney just got uh, just awarded them with the. They're saying that they're only going to come to to economy, especially with the metaverse um, stuff coming up. Um, you know, and right now, you know, with these, you know, this nodes and 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 this political geo wars, you know, that this metaverse stuff is real. You know that, and I'm serious about this metaverse wars. Um, you know, this this is real stuff. Metaverse wars and. And who controls nodes and the technology and the CPUs and you know how many nodes can we create and and, and the st the state of the the blockchain uh, in relationship with the metaverse and um, you know and just the creation of technology you know that's you know that that's how countries and and economies are <clears throat> are toppled right now with technology the metaverse wars I coined it. I'm telling you right here, right now. Um, okay, so economy. Economy is another one that's a um, um, it's an NFT. It's it's a it's its own blockchain, uh, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait for these guys to to get added to Binance and um, come up with their own. They're gonna come up with their own blockchain, their own NFT marketplace. This thing is gonna blow through the roof. I'm telling you. If y'all not paying attention to this one, man, th this is gonna make millionaires. This really has a, a use case. You talking about millionaires and use case? This, you gotta pay attention to this one. Don't don't let it slip up behind you. Um, and then one that I'm into, and I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, it's another NFT that I think is pretty cool. Um, let me see. Wait, NFT. Uh, so another another website to go to is called DAP. DAP Radar. Let's see how long have I been recording here? Oh, okay, I got I got some time. Uh, DAP Radar. Okay, so let's go to DAP Radar. Let me find the NFTs. <coughs> Axie Infinity, man, we gotta go here. I gotta take you there. Um, so I haven't bought my Axies yet because I don't know if I want to even. Because I, I this this kind of gaming is just a little bit more complex than I want to play. Um, yeah, Axie Infinity. If you're into this kind of gaming, it, it will require a lot of your time. It's it's gotten very complex where you got to put this this cards together to fight your opponent. Um, yeah, it's like a Pokemon thing where you have different powers and and you can make you know com combinations of different attacks and, and stuff. Um, and you can make some money. Don't get me don't get me wrong. You you can definitely make some money. This, and the token just shot through the roof, man. People just it, it made some millionaires. That's that's for sure. It definitely made some millionaires, and, and it escaped me. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Um, that was the floor price, as you can see. Uh, so it was like Solana. It just thing just went through the roof. Um, so yeah, this thing is you know you'd be buying the top right now if you bought this. I, I wouldn't do that. Again, it's not financial advice. But I'm saying th these are like you know places where you can go like NFT games, NFT art. Um, you know that you can find a niche market. Whether you're a gamer or you're an artist, and you can you know monetize some of these. I'm just I'm just showing you possibilities. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not giving you um, 
any kind of money making advice I'm showing you possibilities right uh, and, and the reason why I believe personally on the Ethereum or the Binance chain or any other chain for that effect um, <clears throat> other than the Bitcoin chain well there's so much more potential um, because the Bitcoin chain only has one coin as opposed to the other chains uh, even even the, the the side chains right like Solana and, and Matic and then you have the you know the NFT side chains like you know like Axie Infinity Axie is actually a side chain it's, it's not a it's, it's not a multi-layer solution because that it has its own token uh, you have to bridge um, into the Axie into the Ronin um, it's called the Ronin um, chain in order to get their token uh, so it has a Ronin token that you have to transfer your Ethereum uh, and then they pay you in Ronin uh, but the token the Axie token is worth a hundred the Axis right it's, it's worth this but then they have a bridge token which is called Ronin uh, which is how you use um, you know the, the how you get paid and all that uh, it's, it's, it's fun it goes he goes the, the Ronin right here thing um, yeah so you know it's, it's fun you know it's, it's a lot to do and if you're gonna play games you might as well play games that pay you right uh, to me you know I just say that I'm not gonna mention no names I'm just gonna say right if you're gonna play games you might as well play games that, that get you paid um, and you, I mean, you know you can look at oh my god so many rankings of uh, you know other chains you know you got EOS you got Tron chain because Tron is another gaming uh, chain uh, so these are all different chains right here you got the Binance chain that has that may have games you know, like pancake swap you know you have other farming then you have the farming stuff that you can look at um, you have social chains I mean you got gambling you got all kinds of stuff you can look at um, to make money uh, you have the Solana see Solana is a chain like I told you guys there is this the, Ron, the Ronin chain um, Harmony Harmony is pretty cool too um, Avalanche I'm waiting for it Ada, Ada to freaking pop up. Um, so yeah, you, you have plenty of other side chains, right? Polygon side chain. Polygon is supposed to be pretty, pretty hot too. So not just Ethereum, you know. There's there's a ton of other side chains uh, to include Binance that you can play with. Uh, so let me see. Uh, the next one I call, uh, I'll cover the wallets, and I'm gonna also talk about the uh, what I what I consider the deception that is anonymity. Uh, we'll talk about um, you know connecting the dots, right? Which is talk about data points, uh, on-chain analytics. Um, but I'll do that separate from the wallet security because I've talked about wallet security, uh, but I want to make another. Uh, one about wallet security and again you know um, keep talking about it so again you know we're going to start teaching um, JavaScript and that's going to be additional don't know how much that's going to be right now but that will be a separate course um, it's going to be an eight week course there will be there will be projects um, again you know it's, it's not a check the block um, I am a developer I take it seriously so there will be there will be projects uh, you 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 know you can't be a developer if you don't code. So uh, you will have to code. You know you will have to meet the projects. And you have to do the projects. Um, and I'm I'm not gonna do the projects for you. So you know this is about learning, and you know you gotta learn. So it's gonna be basic JavaScript though. So it's it's something that it will walk you through the process, and you will learn. So if you wanna learn, you wanna learn this this stuff that's called blockchain. Uh, by all means, right? Let me let me know. Give me some feedback. And uh, I think this is about far enough. 50 minutes for this one. Um, anything else that you want to talk about in the future? Just let me know. Um, oh, I'll leave you with this because you probably need to have some homework. Um, talked about how it was around for email, right? So the blockchain is called Web 3.0. 
Web 3.0, right? Email was probably considered Web 1.0. Web 2.0 was Facebook, social media, right? Um, because Web 2.0, well, Web 1.0 web was the internet, right? Email, the internet, the internet just basic websites that just gave you information. That was Web 1.0. Web 2.0 is when you have social media, when you have apps, like an environment that kept you engaged and you actually had to sign up for that environment right so you create an account now you're part of that environment a community in an environment that's web 2.0 social media <clears throat> a little bit more complex now you have web 3.0 where you have the blockchain which is, which is a network of decentralized operations way more way more complicated now we have payments decentralized operations finance all these things going on right I would challenge you to come and read this article. Come and find it. You can see clearly what it is. Google it. All right. Part of learning is not being told what information is. Matter of fact, learning is not about being told what information is. Learning is about discovery. So I'm going to challenge you to learn. Discover. All right. Google this article. Read it. I'm going to challenge you discover right discover yes we need to sometimes be told right what something is because how else do we do we get exposed you know experience is a great teacher but sometimes we need to we need exposure right in order to get experience so I'm exposing you right now it's up to you to go get the experience right because I exposed you so I'm gonna challenge you, right? Go get, go find this article, go read it, right? Go get that experience, right? Go do it. Um, web 1.0, Web 2.0, Web 3.0. Um, it says right here 1999, but I like to go back to 1996. As a matter of fact, if you go to my Facebook, you'll see how I talk about 1996, and I talk about email, and I talk about the dot com, and how I wish someone had exposed me back then and told me you know what if you drop a hundred dollars on any one company or drop fifty dollars pick ten companies pick ten companies and drop fifty dollars on each company you probably could have made some money now again I'm not giving you financial advice please do not go dropping fifty dollars on, on, on a coin hoping that it hits because it's not going to work that way I'm being a little sarcastic right because you do have to do some some research but imagine that right if somebody had told you if you're old enough like me and somebody had told you you know hey you know if you do some research you really pay some attention to this internet thing and this dot com thing you know maybe you can be a millionaire right who knows you know this, this internet thing there might be some to it but if you don't know you don't know you know I just talked to my 20 21 year old son about crypto he's like what is crypto you know I'm a developer right I write code my son doesn't know what Bitcoin is we don't live together right because he lives he's in the army he's in another city but how about that right I'm a developer I code he doesn't know what Bitcoin is it's yeah it's that's how it was back in 96 I didn't know what the internet was yeah and then so I'm trying to teach my son right now you know what all this stuff is because I want him to make an informed decision right? imagine if I knew that back then what it was wow the internet the dot-com boom be able to pick the right company or just just a decent company Microsoft Apple I don't know any one of those right 15 20 years later boom possibilities right we're just talking possibilities here we're talking potential I'm exposing you you need to discover all right team I will see you on the next one please 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 give me some feedback let me know what y'all think 
right? I want to hear what y'all want to what y'all want to know about, what y'all want to talk about next time. I right? talk to y'all later.